This is Conrad Nagel inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail. Now, another Proudly We Hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, transcribed coast-to-coast coast in cooperation with this station and presented by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your host and star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished star of the theater, screen, radio, and television, Conrad Nagel. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Journey with us to yesteryears. We ride with the Mounted Patrol of the United States Cavalry for a thrilling story entitled Warpath. We'll begin the first act in just a moment after this brief but very important message. Can you hold down a man's job? If your answer is yes, there's a man's job waiting for you in our rapidly expanding United States Army. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and get all the details today. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Lieutenant Frank Baldwin, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Warpath. We've been snowed in here at the ranch for three days now. I was pretty bored at being cooped up, so the second day I started roaming through the rambling old ranch house. My grandfather started it back in the 90s, and it's been added to every few years until now it sprawls all over the place. My grandfather died when I was only five. He came out of the Civil War a lieutenant, Lieutenant Frank Baldwin. My father named me after him. Soon after the war, he was ordered west to fight Indians. When he retired, the government gave him a land grant, which was the start of this ranch. My father had often told me my grandfather was a stickler for details. Kept a complete account in the form of diaries of each day's activities, all the years he served in the cavalry. I'd found the diaries in a dust-covered, battered old army trunk. And as I sat in my comfortable chair in front of the fire and read them, I saw myself as Lieutenant Frank Baldwin of the United States Cavalry. And soon I was transported back through the years, back to a day when the words frontier, pioneers, engines, warpath, meant something else than just another movie. Cross the bridge of time and return to other days when men followed a star toward the west and the word frontier was a beckoning call. Stand at sunset and look to the crouching mountains across the plains. Listen to the rustling buffalo grass, whisper of tom-toms thudding through the anxious night. Listen carefully and you may hear the ghostly echo of a bugle call. The creak of well-worn saddles, the busy clink of accoutrements, the muffled rhythmic tread of cavalry on the long trail, their guidance snapping proudly in the desert wind. Well, what do you make of it, Dixon? Well, hold up, Lieutenant. We'll have a look-see. Sergeant, halt the column. Oh, oh. Uh, trail's about a day old, around 20 horses. War party traveling light, heading up to Sweetwater. Uh, probably the same bunch that ambushed Tennessee's wagon train. We'll head up to Sweetwater and make camp near Dolan. Well, I'll scout ahead with Kiva. I don't like to tell you army fellas about your business, but I'd go mighty careful, Lieutenant. Satanta's one smart engine. And it ain't just the Kiowas on the warpath either. It's the Comanches, the Cheyennes, the Arapahoes. I know and all the... that, Dixon. I know all that. I've got my orders and we'll push on. All right. I'll send Kiva back if everything's hunky dory. Come on, Kiva. Sergeant Brady? Because I was a cavalry soldier, I away the rolling river. Hey, Billy, tell us about.
about that time you shot the Indian from a mile off? What for, Woodhull? You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I guess he that must have been quite a ruckus you boys had up in Adobe Walls. Well, it was fair to middle and spitty child. There was 28 of us holding off 300 of White Bear's best. What'd you do, count them? Just the dead ones. You fit them for eight days, didn't you? I wasn't keeping track of time. But I reckon it was about that long till some of you soldier boys could tear yourselves away from the comforts of Dodge City and come give us a hand. Did you hear what they did to Hennessy? Murdering devils. Well, maybe if you was an engine, you might think we was the murdering devils. You stick up for them low jumps. Keep down. your stripes on, Woodhull. Just remember, Horace, I've forgotten more about engines than you'll ever know. I've lived with them, smoked with them, and I've... Dixon, Lieutenant uh, Baldwin would like to have a word with him. All right. See you boys later. Funny cuss, ain't he? Yeah, well, maybe so. But I ain't sorry he's along. He ain't known from the panhandle to Bighorn for nothing. We're bound, we're bound away. Lieutenant? Yes, sit down, Dixon. Yeah, yeah. I'm sending word back to General Miles that we've hit Indian sign. We're following it up the Sweetwater. Yeah. But I want reinforcements because I think it's a trap. Suppose you tell me what you think. All right. I think it's a trap, too. I feel they've been watching us since we left the fort. What have you seen to make you feel that? Well, when you've been around these parts as long as I have, you don't have to see anything to know you got trouble. All you got to do is feel it. Now, no engine in his right mind would leave the trail we're following unless he wanted us to follow it. Suppose they were in a big hurry. Wouldn't matter how big a hurry. A blind man could follow this trail. Well, maybe you're right. A rider from the battalion came in a few minutes ago. He brought some good news. There was a big fight on the Anadarko two days ago. Santana was captured and the Indians badly beaten. So this may be the trail of some of the survivors. How many was in that fight? The dispatch didn't say. Just said there was a big fight and we whipped them. Nevertheless, I posted pickets up on the ridges there and warned them to stay awake. And I put a strong guard around the horses. That's right smart, Lieutenant. And don't be surprised if you have about 300 blood-mad Comanches around your neck come dawn. Yeah, I think I'll turn in. Don't know when I'll get a chance to sleep again. Night. Been up long? A spell. Keep and I had a look around. See anything? Nope. But the feeling's still there. Don't hear any of those howling Comanches you mentioned. Hope you don't have to, Lieutenant. Keep and I will try and follow the ridge up there. Good. We'll move out shortly. <laughs> Sergeant Brady, what do you make of that? That is an Indian smoke, sir. More like a burning house. Take a squad of men and have a look. We'll wait here. No need, sir. Here come the scouts. Take over the column, Sergeant. I'll ride out to meet them. Yes, sir. What is it, Dixon? Settler's cabin. Man and two women. Dead. Bait for the trap. Lieutenant, the valley's crawling with engine sign. If we ain't careful, we'll ride right into another Fetterman. Fetterman disobeyed orders. I have to follow mine. Orders or no orders, we're walking right into a trap. Have you seen any Indians? Lieutenant, you don't see them until they're ready for you to. Then it's too late. You agree, Kiva? Don't like. Plenty sign, plenty bad. They torture people at cabin before they kill. Take plenty time. No afraid of soldiers. Just the same orders or orders we've got to go on. Uh, you're the boss, Lieutenant. See here, Dixon. Can't you appreciate the spot I'm in? I've got my orders to push on until I make contact with the Indians what we were sent out to do, and I certainly can't turn back now with nothing more to go on than your hunches and mine that they're all around us. I've got to know for sure. Then too late. Nevertheless, we go on. Just to make doubly sure, I'll dispatch a rider back to the battalion and tell them to come on as fast as they can. We can't wait here till they catch up? No, Dixon, we can't. All right. I guess you got to do what you got to do. But Keeve and I both advise you to stay clear of that burning cabin. You can't do anything for them folks there now. And it's a likely spot for an ambush. Can we uh, go around it? Yeah, I'll lead you around. Kiva will go on ahead again. Now, order your men to stay on their toes. Oh, life is grand and life is free in the U.S. Cavalry. 
gets much hotter, I'll bust. Yeah, where do we hit the desert? Where are all those Indians I've been hearing so much about? Pipe down, you mule skinners. Well, another mile, we'll hit Euro Canyon. I'll have the men walk their mounts. It's a mean spot to go through. Think we can get through it before dark? Well, that'll depend on a lot of things. There's Kiva. Seems to be in somewhat of a hurry. Kiva don't ride like that for nothing. Oh, column, Lieutenant. Get men up into those rocks. Then you come with me. I show you engine. Plant the engine. Watch your step, Lieutenant. Right here. I go look. Isn't this the ridge by the canyon entrance? Yeah. Lucky thing for us, Kiva came around from the rear. Now keep your head down. You come now. You crawl on belly to top. Never mind engine by trail. I already take his scout. Now you look over ridge into canyon. What? Well, I, uh, I don't understand it. There's only a dozen of them down there. What are they doing? Keep your voice down. They're waiting for you to show up. Then you chase them into the canyon. Now look carefully up and down the sides of it as far as you can see. Yeah, but I don't... Uh... Great jumping gee huss of that. Yeah. And you can bet that around the bend there are more of them. Why, there must be two or three hundred. At least. Three hundred to fifty ain't good odds. Especially when they're waiting for you. Eat bad medicine down there? Yes. Yes, we better get out of here. They're not going to stand there waiting forever. When we don't show up, they'll come looking. They'll also be waiting for whoever they had up here to give them a signal. Come on, men. Dixon. Maybe we can turn the tables on them. You mean wait here for them to come out after us? We don't wait for them to come. I'll ride in with ten men. We'll pick that narrow spot just ahead to place the rest of the column. When we get to the canyon entrance, instead of chasing the decoys, we'll turn and run. If I know anything at all about Indians, they won't be able to resist chasing us. Well, it's a good idea, Lieutenant. We either do that or get out of here fast. We do that. Sergeant Brady. Yes, sir. Too late, Lieutenant. Look. Ah. Well... At least we didn't walk into it. They'll have to come to us. Yeah, what are they waiting for, Dixon? Uh, they're in no hurry, just figuring out the best way to do the job. Quite a sight, isn't it? I'll have the men try to aim for the chiefs. Men, hold your fire until I give the order. Oh, wait a minute. They're not going to attack. They're leaving. Well, now, what do you suppose? There's your answer. The battalion's caught up with us. The Indians must have known it. Then I guess sending back that message wasn't such a bad idea. You couldn't have had a better one, Lieutenant. Not and keep your hair on your head. Oh, life is grand and life is free in the U.S. Conrad Nagel, starring in the role of Lieutenant Frank Baldwin in the proudly we hail production, Warpath, will return in just a moment for the second act. Here's some great news for intelligent young men. Your growing United States Army needs qualified young officers, and a brand new regulation says you can apply for OCS, Officer Candidate School, before you enlist. You must be at least 19 years old and able to pass the mental and physical exams for Army officers. A high school diploma is your best qualification. If you're accepted, you'll take 14 weeks of basic, then to leadership school for eight weeks, and be sent directly to OCS. You'll be taught many interesting subjects, and it'll be a great day when you line up for your commission. You'll be proud to be an officer in the United States Army with good pay and allowances for quarters and food. This is a great opportunity for young men, and you should take advantage of it now. If you think you can make the grade, get all the details at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Lieutenant Frank Baldwin, we present the second act of Warpath.
Because I was a cavalry soldier, high away the rolling river. Into the desert the battalion moves, swallowed up in gray dust that powders and coats horses and men alike. They follow a trail that twists and turns and seems to lead to nowhere. They follow an elusive enemy that moves as silently and quickly as a desert wind. Finally, low on water, with no water to be found, they must give up the chase. And so, like an army of haggard ghosts, they turn their failing mounts and return once more to the valley of the Sweetwater. At McClellan's Creek, they make camp and take stock of their situation and report to General Miles. At ease, gentlemen. <clears throat> Now, the supply train should arrive before sundown tomorrow. And as you know, we're tied here until it does. My scouts tell me that they have seen little Indian sign in the past two days. I think we can assume the main body continued on across the desert. But with Colonel McKenzie moving down from the north and Davidson coming in from the west, you can be sure they'll be swinging back this way. However, we are powerless to move in any strength until the supply train does arrive. Now, I want you... Dear Fire! Yeah, I ought to make McClellan Creek with these supplies in another two hours. Made right good time. Yeah, darn good. <laughs> but the general will thank us himself. <laughs> Yeah, but I sure wish we had more of the boys riding along with us. My hair would sit a little tighter. <laughs> if you had any hair. <laughs> uh, Jim, look! Ah, engines. Must be a hundred of them. Give those horses the whip. We're going to run for it. Come on! Get <laughs> that buffalo gun working. Run, you beauties! Run for your life! Sent for me, General? Did you see the wagon train come in tonight, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. All shut up. All shut up. And most of the rations gone. I can't move to join Davidson and McKenzie without rations. I'm sending you back to Camp Supply. You're to see that another wagon train is dispatched immediately. Dixon knows the trail better than anyone. I want him to be a guide. Just the two of us, General? No, there'll be six of you all together. Three privates and your crow friend, Kiva. I want you to start right away. Travel just at night and hold up during the day. You should get through. I guess I don't have to tell you how well the trail is being watched. I'll keep it in mind, General. Some sun will be up in another half hour. We better start looking for a place to hold up. Eh, another two hours of hard riding and we'd be at camp supply. Yeah, but we've made out all right for two nights. Now, let's not spoil it by getting scalped. <laughs> you know, for a lieutenant, you might do all right if you can live long enough. <laughs> From you, that's a compliment. Yeah, you better halt your men here. I'll ride ahead and scare up Kiva. Yeah, not much in the way of cover out here. <laughs> Who's up there? War party, right behind. They come fast. Get ready. <laughs> yeah, oh, wait a minute. It's too late to ride for it. Dismount, men, and fight on foot. Smith, you hold the horses. Oh, they're stopping. Keep it up, men. Keep it up. They've got Smith. There go our horses. They'll be back just as soon as they get organized. All right, men. Take cover. Over there in that buffalo wallow. Come on. We'll fight it out here. Kiva, get up and come over here. Here they come again. Let them get in close. All right, now. Where are you going, Dixon? Kiva, he's trying to crawl over. He'll get you, sure. We'll keep firing to give you cover. <laughs> All right, Kiva. Now, put your arms around my neck. Good. 
Now, hold on tight. Yeah. Come on, Dixon. Uh, come on. Uh, yeah. Uh, come on, I'll give you a hand. Uh, we uh, make it. Ah. Uh, uh, this the kind of work makes an old man before his time. Here they come again! You take him on the left, Kiva. I'll take the right. You three men hit the center. How long we've been here? Long enough to fry. Save your breath, man. I gotta have water, Lieutenant. I tell you, I've gotta have water. Take it easy, Joe. <laughs> I'm a shot full of holes. I gotta have water to fill up the holes. Watch him. He's going loco. <sighs> Me too. I got a mouth full of cotton and a throat full of dirt. Save it, Raph. Oh, Talking just makes you thirstier. Look, a great big river flowing right down the center of the prairie. I'm gonna get a drink. Harrington, Harrington, get down. Get Raph, down. I hate to do this. Ow! Uh, poor devil. Uh, let's see. Looks like everybody's got a hole in them but you and Rath, Dixon. Uh, how are you doing, Lieutenant? Think this fighting engine is all it's cracked up to be? Hey, will ask me that when we get out of here. If we get out. I don't know which is worse. Dying of thirst or getting scalped. We're not going to die of thirst. That's for sure. Look. Look over there. Are those rain clouds, Dixon? What do you say, Kiva? We get wet. We get plenty wet. You gotta be right. You just gotta be right, that's all. Keep your head down. It'll get here soon enough if it's coming. Ah, ain't it wonderful? Here, Harrington, get your nose out of that puddle and drink out of my hat. Dixon, do you think they'll attack on this? Nope. The Indians don't like fighting in a thunderstorm. Won't hurt to keep your eyes open, though. This is one rainstorm I'll never forget. He can. Cool now. I'm going out to get Smitty. The Indians can't see me in this rain. Smitty's dead. We can use his ammunition and his rifle. Need any help? Yeah, come on. We'll run for it. Bring him back so they can't scalp him. Okay. Grab that arm. All right. Heave. Hey! Hey, he moved. He's alive. Go easy with him. Yeah. Well, looks like the rain cooled him off, Lieutenant. Yeah, it's probably just waiting till it gets dark. Smitty's not gonna last long out here. He's got two slugs in his chest. I ain't either. Ah, you thick Irishman. Nothing could kill you. As soon as it gets dark, one of us will have to try to get through to camp supply. Well, me and Wrath are the only ones who are still able to move on foot. And I elect me. Well, no, no, you stay here. You best shot at anybody. We need you. That's right, Dixon. The way you handle that buffalo gun's a sight to see, so I guess it's up to you, Wrath. As soon as it's dark, just find the trail and keep moving. Somebody out there. Come closer. Shh. Get ready. Harrington, huh? snap or whatever. Hey. Hey. It's me. Wrath. Wrath. Wrath, come on in, man. Make it quick. I couldn't find the trail. I've been wandering around for hours. Just lucky I found you again. See any engines? No, not a one. Uh... I reckon I'll have to try for it. How, Smitty? He's dead, Wrath. Well, it's pretty close to daybreak. I'll leave you my buffalo gun and just keep my coat. I'll get help to you as quick as I can. We'll be waiting for you, Dixon. Keep your hair on. Look for an attack at sunrise. Have you? One more attack, men, and we're done for. I've got five shots left. I've got seven. Save last shot for self. I saved one for Harrington. I guess Dixon didn't make it. No give up, Hope. Scalp still on head. Sure would be a pleasure to keep it there. And they stopped shooting. Yes, they're lining up to try it again. 
Well, we sure gave him a good fight while it lasted. Make him good end, too. Take plenty with us to Land of Shadows. Listen. Listen. Listen to that. There they are. Look at them come. Dixon! Hey, you lieutenant! What you been doing in that buffalo wallow? Playing poker? Yeah, come on in and we'll deal your hand. Where you been? Listen carefully and you may hear the ghostly echo of a bugle call. The creak of well-worn saddles, the busy clink of accoutrements, the muffled rhythmic tread of cavalry on the long trail, their guidance whipping in the desert wind as they ride on into yesterday. Our star, Conrad Nagel, will return in just a moment with a word about next week's show. Here's a special message. The United States Army needs young men, men with ambition who want to continue their education. If you can qualify, the Army will send you to one of its many fine technical schools. The Army trains its men in such interesting, exciting fields as radio, radar electronics, mechanics, meteorology, and many, many others. You'll not only get the finest training in the world, but you'll have the special pride that goes with wearing a United States Army uniform. Today, there are plenty of chances for a man to get ahead, for our Army is growing fast, and ambitious young men can grow with it. But why not learn for yourself about what the Army has to offer? Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Have a talk with a recruiting sergeant and learn all the facts. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Conrad Nagel. Supporting Mr. Nagel in the role of Dixon was Joe DeSantis. Warpath was written by DeWitt Cuff. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star... Conrad Nagel. Friends, we hope you'll join us next week for Proudly We Hail for a suspense-filled story full of surprises. Our play is entitled The Trial of Gregory Winslow, and it's a story with a twist that you won't want to miss. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>